What's up guys? Welcome back. Listen, I'm sure throughout our lives a lot of us have thought, yeah, cartoons are cool, I like watching your Phineas's, your Furbies, your Spengbabs, but gee, I wonder what political movements these characters would be al aligned with, right? These are all normal, very normal thoughts to have. Please do not point out how terminally online I am, I can't handle it. Uh, so for that exact reason, today we are going to be I was gonna say democratically determining the alignment of these characters, but it's really quite authoritarian. Like, y'all will be my advisors, as it were, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's my, it's my word that goes. All right, let's get this underway. And I really shot myself in the foot because I started with the one character who probably is gonna be the hardest for me to place here. I really don't know what to do with SpongeBob. <laughs> So I'm torn between a couple of camps. One camp is to say there is this idea that when a character is just kind of neutral, you just throw them smack in the center and call it good. You know, your, your grill dad archetype who's not really drawn either direction. But there's also, there's a sweetness to him that makes me wonder what to do about him at the same time that he is also very much a simp for work, <laughs> working for Mr. Krabs. Yeah, like people were pointing out in, in chat, he very easily justifies his own exploitation of like working for less than a dollar a day or whatever they establish as his pay rate. <laughs> the emptiness in his eyes makes me think Lib right. How are those empty? Those are such lively little eyes accompanied by such a cute little smile. But I do think after remembering how much he simps for uh, so he's not libertarian. He simps too much for Mr. Krabs to be anywhere on the bottom half of the spectrum here. Hey folks, Editing Piley here. In the heat of the moment, while the passions of live streaming were getting to me, uh, I realized I made a little bit of a verbal slip up. I for some reason implied that only auth right, or that is to say more like state-oriented capitalists, simp for their bosses, which just isn't true. Read any Ayn Rand piece of work or to ask a libertarian about how great of a savior Elon Musk is and they will just start absolutely simping for those motherfuckers. I was giving a bit too much credit to the idea that they're, you know, principled libertarians or, you know, actually care about uh, unjust hierarchies in the workplace just because they like to smoke weed and maybe want gay people to get married. It was my mistake, it'll never happen again, uh, but I still think Spongebob is off right just because I think his simping is a very specific uh, kind of brand of simping. So I just wanted to clear that up, didn't want any pitchforks in the comment section or to figure out later on Twitter that I was being cancelled, so please, hopefully this, this staves off the mob, thank you. Anyways, back to the video. Yeah, he does give off very much liberal vibes, eh, so maybe more... Maybe more like here, like just barely off right. You know what? Much like the leaders of this side of the spectrum, I'm gonna decide that without consulting democracy. Okay, Chowder. He's actually in an oddly similar place for me where he's just kind of blobby and apolitical, but he does, and he's got a sweetness to him that makes me think, that makes me drawn to like a light lib left. But I think he also simps for working for Mung, though I think he's much less enthusiastic about... I, I remember him being, you know, lazy time to time, whereas Spongebob is like, ah oh, yes, I love providing value for my employer, you know? That's kind of his whole thing. <laughs> the hat is very lib left. It's a great point. Maybe he is the true centrist. Maybe he's the first centrist of the bunch because he enjoys work, but he doesn't simp for it too much. He enjoys cooking, but he's not like, but as somebody said in chat, he does have conflicts with the industry. You know what? For a second, I'm gonna shelve Chowder and move on to the other characters from his show because I, I need an easy dub. My initial reaction is to say Lib left because of how sex obsessed and like how much of a romantic he is and all that. But then I remembered he's a business owner 
So maybe he belongs more so like over here? Yeah, he is pretty petite bourgeois. <laughs> That's a great point. He loves child labor. I don't think he's extreme over here. I'll put him middlingly libright. And then we have his lovely wife, Truffles. I feel it's pretty easy to say right off the bat, um, kind of in contrast to Mung, that she fits a very like authoritarian archetype in the show. But I wonder how high up and to which side she goes. I'm tempted to say she also being a business owner is like up here-ish. Yeah, she's a worse businessman than he, That's and I think that's part of why initially I was drawn to put him like lib left is he just kind of has a aloofness about him, but she's much more strict about running the business. So I think I'm good with that. Now the interesting question becomes schnitzel. He's definitely somewhere left. He has an awareness uh, and frustration with his exploitation that again, in direct contrast with SpongeBob, definitely doesn't put him on the right. And I'm torn between whether or not he gives me like anarchist vibes or like militant labor union vibes, you know? You know what? I think I'm pretty good with Auth left there. Uh, now let's bring it back to Chowder. All things considered, I think he's probably the safest centrist on the board. I can't really think of many defining qualities that would pull him in either direction. Now let's move on to Danny Phantom. This is a this is going to be another one of the harder ones for me. Was he involved? Was he a cop? Was he like a ghost police cop essentially? And by essentially I mean did he work for an organization to like help jail all the ghosts that came out of the ghost zone? Like am I remembering that correctly? Or was he the exact opposite because I know his parents <laughs> fit kind of this like um bourgeois authright kind of cop like archetype oh he caught and released them okay see that changes things for me because i definitely got libertarian vibes from him but whether or not you are or simp for cops determines if you're over here or if you're over here you know but thank you to the one and only michael mccormick in chat for mentioning that episode I had totally forgotten about where, you know, there's the ghost patrol that charges money that he hates. I think for me that puts him pretty firmly in a sort of lib left place. Next, we move on to Sam. I don't know why I'm bothering to expand her here. Uh, I don't need to hear from chat. She is pretty firmly off left and that is my final decision. There's nothing you can do about it. What's his name again? Jared? Is that this guy's name? Tucker, thank you. Um, I'm feeling slight lib right vibes here. I don't know why he gives me massive Elon Musk Reddit simp energy. Like he patrols r slash Wall Street bets a lot. Yeah, he, he has some incel vibes about him too. If he weren't like trying to be so cool as it were, I would definitely feel that. So I, I feel pretty safe about like here. Next up, one of my favorite shows growing up, uh, American Dragon. I forgot how much I liked this show um, or how much I watched it as a kid. I think this premiered right around the time. Life story for Piley here. <laughs> my parents wouldn't let me watch anything but PBS up until like 2006, 2007. And I think this show was premiering right around the time that I was just finally able to watch, you know, like <laughs> normal cartoons as it were. Um, so this one is a special place in my heart. I'm definitely getting libertarian vibes from him, but I think what's tripping me up, and chat, maybe again you can help, I'm trying to remember how often he got caught up in like money-making schemes. I agree, love though. I, maybe I'll make a part two of this with just like PBS Arthur characters. Well, that's a great point, Michael McCormick. He came from a international like lineage of dr dragon superheroes. He's quite literally old money. So given that his skater boy vibes give off um, an anti-authority, but he does himself come from authority, I think that maybe puts him in kind of a, a split position. So I guess the question is, does he lean right or lean left with a balanced authority spectrum? You know what? You said it better than I could, Toots. He's got a red shirt. So he's slightly to the left. Okay, moving on. Okay, Jammy Nutrin. I don't know why 
Even though he's a nice kid, I get really bad Authright vibes from him. Oh, okay, Elo so you guys are thinking Libright then, okay. Maybe it's just something about his hoity toityness makes me think Authright instead of Libright. Okay, you know what? I'll submit to democracy once. Every Everyone's saying Elon Musk in chat, so. Now we get to the most interesting character in the Jimmy Neutron TV show, Sheen. I mean, is it even a question that he's like somewhere in the lib left? Like, is that even up for debate? Exactly, I'm like, Sheen just feels like a classic anarchist. I'm gonna say it, I literally don't care what happens in Planet Sheen, that show is non-canonical in my opinion. It, as the, he does, you know, he is obsessed with Ultra Lord and all that, but I guess that's a deep question of like, can you be like a socialist or an anarchist and also like really like Disney? Is that a contradiction? <laughs> I didn't even mean for it to be X-shaped. Maybe I need to fix that. Oh, see, now that you pointed it out, I'm gonna be very specific about it. So maybe, I think given all we said about like, his obsession with consumerism, I think maybe he fits more into like just a anti-authority position, less than any way specifically left or right. And exactly, you can like and enjoy the stuff the company made, even if you don't like Disney itself. I don't think that's a contradiction. Let's get on to Finn the Human. This is another one where I'm gonna say, and then somebody in chat is gonna point out something to contradict it. Is he anything but lib right? Lib right. Is he anything but lib left? He simps for the monarchy. I guess, see exactly, here we go again. The cycle's repeating. People are reminding me of things I forget. You know, I hate to do it to you, Finn, but I think you gotta go, you've gotta go into the bad quadrant. <laughs> He's a great example of where like, my brain, my childhood brain is telling me, no, you liked this character. This character is a good person. And I'm like, but that doesn't mean he, <laughs> what his character did in the show was representative of, <laughs> you know, my politics or anything. Naughty characters get put in the bad quadrant, which is funny that the bad quadrant has both Spengbab and Finn the human in this chart. See, that's the other thing is he's a generally helpful guy. Okay, I'm actually gonna come back to Finn. I'm a little bit confused. So let's move on to Ed. Important question, because I literally forget. Which one of these is Ed? Which one of these is Ed? And which one of these is Eddie? Okay, actually first I'm gonna go to the one of these characters that's probably the easiest. He is definitely right wing. Every episode is about him trying to find some sort of money-making scheme that was like literally the point of the show. But, and maybe this is just the kid-like nature of the show and the animation style, I do get kind of anti-authority vibes. Not super strong. So I think he maybe goes somewhere like here. Now, Ed, as somebody said in the chat, I get pretty firm, like, socialist vibes. I'm not sure. Mm, to what extent is he anti-authority? He kind of goes along with Eddie on a lot, but... Yeah, so that's where I'm getting, like, off-left from Ed. And then for Ed, you know, I just don't know what it is. There's something just, and maybe this is just the the kind of stoner archetypes and all that, but something just screams lib left about Ed. And I'm trying to remember what actually happens in the show. His, I think that's more the, the, the chaos energy of him that makes me think like, yeah, he could be convinced to be like an anarchist. So I think I'm satisfied with that. Now let's wrap up by returning to Finn here. And Jesus Christ, I really have no idea what to do with this. Because he does simp for the monarchy, but he does some good things. So maybe, you know what, in hindsight, similar to Ed, I think he's gonna go kind of like in a slightly left, but also slightly simping for authority position. Because it is really hard for me to fit <laughs> simping for the monarchy into anywhere on this part of the compass. Exactly, anarcho-monarchist. Like, that doesn't really, th th those two things don't really gel, you know? You know what? I think I'm happy with this. I think <laughs> this chart, I can put it online, send it out into the ethers of the internet, and feel A-OK -okay, um, with people giving me shit, because you know what? I think I like it. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Really appreciate you giving me your, the time of your, your day for this goofy little exercise. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And now let's turn it on over to the pre-recorded outro. Be sure to toss me a like and subscribe down below. 
But if you really want to help me out, you can join me over on Patreon. Patrons get access to exclusive behind-the-scenes content, like early versions of every video, and exclusive Patreon-only videos. Plus, if you join the Piley Benton's Biggest Boys tier, you get your name read off at the end of every video, which I am about to do once I pull up the names. Zoth, Sean Locke, Revo Pregame, Emily, Nilik Elites, Floof Pants, and Cameron Fordo. So if you want to hear your lovely name read off at the end of every video, be sure to join me on this specific tier. Thanks much, everyone, and I'll see you next time.